Well, good evening, Macon Baptist Church. Uh, it's good to be with you, with you again. This is our midweek Wednesday night uh, Bible study and prayer time. Hope everybody's doing well, and uh, glad that we can have this time to spend together this evening. Um, hope you've had a good week so far, and uh, and uh, pray that um, all is doing well for you. Um, there are some uh, prayer concerns we, we need to lift up. Of course, we want to remember our brother, uh, Benny Hilliard, and uh, we'll just keep praying for him and um, just help him. Uh, they're getting uh, ready to start uh, uh, new treatments next week, so he's got a week of rest this week to get ready, and, and uh, I think they're starting uh, next Wednesday. Uh, with that, so please be in prayer for him and for Catherine and that family. Uh, please re- uh, remember Glenn Regan. Glenn spent a uh, a little time in the, in the hospital with some uh, with uh, some type of a, a breathing problem. They think maybe anaphylactic shock to something, but they haven't. Uh, I totally uh, got that all figured out. But please be in prayer for for Glenn and um, and just uh, that they'll figure out what's going on with him and be able to help him out with those things. Uh, please remember Diane Tant. Uh, Diane took a fall, and uh, she's recuperating. I think she's doing okay. Uh, last time uh, we heard from her, she was she was moving kind of slow. So please uh, please continue to be in prayer for her. Um, please remember Barbara and Joe Parker. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's uh, remember MC and. Mary Donna, Mr. MC, is having uh, uh, some type of procedure this week for his, to get his heart back in rhythm. So uh, I believe that's going to be on Thursday, uh, if I got my dates right. Please remember him. Of course, Ms. Mary Donna's continuing with her dialysis, and uh, she's doing very well with that. So please be in prayer for both of them about that. I know there's probably some others that I've failed to mention, uh, but uh, we know the Lord knows who they are. And... Um, if you know someone that uh, we need to add to our prayer list, uh, please call the church office, let us know so we can add them and we'll be aware of uh, who they are. And we can be praying for them is the biggest part of that. But uh, please let us know if there's some updates. Please look at the prayer list. There's updates, the names that are on there. We need your help with that. We've got some names that have been on there for a good while. That's fine. We'll, we can keep on there as long as we need to. But we would love to know... Uh, uh, how things are going, uh, get some updates on some names. So if you know of a name that's on there, uh, please, uh, that, that uh, needs to be updated. as updated information about that person. Please give us a call here at the church office and let us know what those things are. Of course, let's don't forget about the praises as well. So uh, we're just, um, we're thankful for all the praises that we hear uh, in and through God's people. Uh, I especially want to Remember Donald Wimbro, he, uh, he shared with us this past Sunday that uh, he had been having some, some heart issues, but uh, the doctors think they, now they have found a combination of blood pressure meds and that kind of thing or whatever that's uh, going to take care of that. And maybe that'll be all that'll need to be required. So uh, that was a praise, and we're thankful for that. But I want to continue to be praying for the doctors and nurses and for Donald and um, I know uh, there are probably many others in our church as well. So, uh, uh, again, just call us and let us know about those updates. Let's pray together as we begin our time together here on Wednesday night. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you now for this day. Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. Lord God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we can gather together. And Lord, that we can study your word and Lord, that we can open your word. Lord, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and our minds. And Lord, just let us hear every thought and idea in your words this evening. And Father, we pray for those on our prayer list. Lord, uh, you you know the names that have been mentioned. Lord, I know there are many others that uh, were not mentioned. But Lord, there uh, may be unspoken prayer requests, unspoken uh, concerns that, Lord, that we've only shared with you. So Father God, regardless of of um, of how they were shared, Lord, we just pray that you would work and move in the lives of uh, your people who need you. Lord, we thank you for working and moving in this world 
for all of this world needs you, Lord. And Lord, help us to stop and to just take a few moments to look up and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that perfect and precious gift of salvation that you gave us on Calvary's cross. So in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so tonight I want to start um, uh, doing a little bit of a review, and, or not a review, but a jumping in. We've probably been over some of, some of these scriptures, will be familiar, but uh, I want to start in the beginning of the book of Acts. And I tell you, what brought me here was, you know, in the book of Acts, we find the, the very first church, the very first Christian church, uh, the first century church of Christ. And, and I believe that in their struggles as they started, and in some of the wonderful excitement of, of the new church and, 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 and something new shaking up this world, uh, they met with some pretty major obstacles, some things that were different than they had ever been anywhere else. And I thought, well, you know, that's not so different than maybe some things we're dealing with right now as far as being turned upside down and uh, being different. Uh, so I think maybe we can, uh, maybe as we kind of travel through uh, the book of Acts and uh, we take a, a look at the at the. Uh, first church, the first century church, that we might uh, see some things here that would help us along our way, they would encourage us along our way, and that we might find some things that can help us live out this Christian life uh, more abundantly, and, and, and we would uh, be able to serve the Lord in a greater way. So with that thought in mind, uh, I'd like to start here in Acts chapter 1, and let's read the first 11 verses together. All right, Acts chapter 1, if you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, if you would find your way over to Acts chapter 1, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 11, so uh, if, uh, if, you, if you found our channel and you don't have your Bible with you, just uh, take, hit the pause button for a minute and uh, go find your Bible, because I'd love for you to be able to look at God's Word, your copy of God's Word for yourself. And maybe grab a pencil and a, and a little piece of paper and maybe make a note or two. Not that anything that I might say is noteworthy, but God's Word certainly is worthy of remembering and maybe something that can help you along the way this week. All right? So let's jump in. Uh, this is Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 1. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen, to, the, uh, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And then in verse 6 it says, So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. And verse 9 says, And after he had said these things, he lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky, and, it, and as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven 
will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. All right. So these are the opening verses in the book of Acts. We just looked at verses 1 through 11. And here there's some things that, that we can see. Uh, the, Lord, uh, the Lord, while he did, uh, he did raise up and was lifted up, called up, uh, he, uh, he did not leave us uh, without, without help. And uh, he did leave some wonderful provisions for us as well. Jesus understood the needs of his disciples before they even uh, knew that they had a need. Uh, and you know, that's the very same thing in our life. He understands the needs we have even before we even know we have a need. Jesus was preparing his disciples for some hard days that he knew uh, was, was headed their way. They didn't realize it at this point, and he was trying to prepare them uh, to give them the things that they would need to be able to survive in these days. Jesus was making provision, provision for them so that they could continue to live a victorious life. So that word provision, what does that pro pro provision, what does that mean? Well, the dictionary defines that word as, it says the act or process of providing. It says the fact or state of being prepared beforehand. Jesus knew all of the things that were, that were going to be going on, all of the things that were going to happen, and, and, it, and, he, and he tried to prepare them as, as best that he could. And, you know, they just really, they were living right in the very moment, and they, they had a hard time really comprehending all that Christ was trying to tell them and explain to them. But he knew what was going to happen, and he was doing his very best to prepare them and get them ready. Well, you know, the nature of people hasn't changed uh, at all since, since those days when he was there with his disciples to today, right now where we are. We may not face the, the, the same crisis that those disciples faced uh, in, in Jesus' day, but, but we, uh, we do have uh, the same needs that those same disciples had. You know, we, we didn't have the, the, the exact circumstance or uh, crisis of, of their uh, leader uh, being drug away, being tried, being beaten, and uh, being put on a cross. They were there physically with him seeing that, and, 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 and they saw all of that just kind of uh, happen, and then, and then if, if you can imagine the, this man that they had been with, this, this, um, this man who had taught them and taught them so much, and then all of a sudden he was gone. But look, we do have the same needs. We have the same needs that they had. They had a need in their day for a Savior. And that has not changed even in our day. We still have a need for a Savior. And Jesus Christ, of course, was that Savior. He told them about all these things that would happen. And they still had a hard time kind of gathering around it. You know, we have a hard time uh, understanding all that sometimes because we try to place a lot of obstacles in the in the way of God working in our lives. And there may man, man, man placed obstacles, and there's nothing we know that through Scripture that there's nothing uh, that, that, that can, that's created uh, by man uh, on this earth, under this earth, in heaven, wherever it is that can take us or separate us uh, from the love of God through Christ Jesus. You know, again, we may not face the same crisis, but we do have the same needs that they had. It's important to know and understand that Jesus provided for them, and he is going to provide for us also. He, he gave them provisions in their day. He made a way for them in their day. And look, it's important that we understand that he is still doing that very same thing for us today. He will provide for us also. These verses show us some areas in life that, that we would be left unprepared if not for Jesus' provisions, if Jesus hadn't planned. Jesus, Jesus saw all the way to us. You understand? Jesus saw all the way past us. He, he sees uh, all the way uh, into eternity, and he knows all of the things uh, that would ever, that's ever going to happen in our lives. And look, uh, he made preparation uh, for us in his word so that uh, we would be able to navigate in those things. And that's why I was so excited as I thought about this and looked at it, that we might have an opportunity to learn some things to help us in our day as we look at the provisions that he left uh, for his disciples. There, that's, that he 
also left those things for us. Well, first, in his word and in this scripture that we're looking at this evening, we see that he provided the proof of the resurrection. And you know, it would be important that they had no doubt about the resurrection. That had to be, uh, you, you know, we, we, uh, we, we can look at that through our mind's eye. We are separated from that some 2,000 years, but they were right there. They, they saw all that happened, and um, they, they, they saw the trial. They saw the blood. They saw the crucifixion. They, they, they saw the tomb and all that, was, all that had happened. You know, and it had to be, that was one of the most, matter of fact, that is the foundation uh, of, of our Christian life. All of Christian teaching depends on this very truth of the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Paul said it like this. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 14. So let's flip over to 1 Corinthians together and look at, um, and look at Paul. Uh, 1 Corinthians Chapter 15 and verse 4. We ain't going to be doing a lot of flipping tonight, but I do want you to see these verses because they're very encouraging verses. Um, chapter 15, let's look at verse 14 together. And it said, and Paul, Paul reminded us of this. Uh, Paul said, and if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. So that should help us to understand, look, that, that, that apart from the resurrection, you know, Christ could have went to the cross. He could have died on the cross. He could have been buried in a grave. But apart from the resurrection, therein lies the power uh, of, of him working in our lives. Jesus knew how important that it would be for all the questions to be removed, especially from, from those who, who believed him. You know, that doesn't mean that we don't, have questions about things that happen in life, but he wants to make sure that we don't have any question concerning the resurrection. He wanted to make sure that there was no question of his resurrection for in the life of his apostles. The proof is infallible uh, it, it, here in verse 3 of our text tonight. Uh, it says, to these who were, uh, to these who also pre presented himself, to these he also presented himself alive. This is in verse 3 of our, of our text in Acts. Okay, so you might want to flip back uh, in that. I hope you kept your thumb there. Let's do that. Let's just flip back over to, to Acts, and then we'll read that because I, I want you to follow along in the Scripture. Uh, again, Acts chapter 1, and this is in verse 3. It said, again, to these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of things concerning the kingdom of God. Okay, so I got a little homework for you, right? So again, I, I said how important that this, this, the resurrection of Christ is to the basic, basic foundation of our Christian walk, our Christian faith. So I got a little homework for you. I want you to read chapter 15 in 1 Corinthians. And there you're going to see the, the documented account of, of Christ's appearance after his death and burial and he was raised up. And this is, a, this is an account for Paul. But I want you to read that. I want you to read chapter 15 and I want you to look at, uh, and that's going to be in 1 Corinthians and read that. And that'll be Paul's account of the appearance of Christ after his, after his death. And um, the followers of Christ were so convinced that they became unstoppable, an unstoppable force. You see, they were they they saw they saw Christ. They were able to, to 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 sit in a room with him. They were able to stand with him. And look, this set them on fire. They were excited. Look, and and they were they they turned the world upside down because of of um, of this uh, of this uh, uh, conviction that they had, and they became an unstoppable force. You see, surrendered faith use, uh, gives us the ability to uh, live up. To our potential as Christians. So a surrendered faith, a surrendered faith, that means that, look, uh, regardless of, of the questions, regardless of uh, what the world may try to tell you is the truth, that you push that aside, you set your faith, you set your sight on the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And in that way, 
in that surrendered faith given to Christ Jesus, then we can reach our full potential as Christians. I, I think about uh, a pastor that I uh, had an opportunity to meet on a couple of different occasions. His name is Johnny Hunt, and Johnny was pastor. Johnny Hunt, past, Pastor Johnny Hunt was uh, uh, served at Woodstock Baptist Church. First, I guess it was maybe First Baptist Woodstock in Georgia, Woodstock, Georgia. And I remember going to some Bailey Smith conferences there, and I got an opportunity to hear uh, Pastor Johnny preach several times. And there was one thing he used to always say when he would pray, and I, I, I remember it. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying it verbatim, but I got the idea of it. And when he would pray, he would always ask the Lord to help him reach his God-given potential and to, uh, and to point as many people towards uh, heaven as he could point, towards Christ as he could point, to take as many people to heaven as he could take and to help him reach his God-given potential. And, you know, I, I, I pray that prayer, and, and that's a prayer for, for me. I, I pray that that would be a prayer for you, that you would, you would be so sold out uh, on, on Christ. You would be so surrendered to him that uh, you would be able to uh, reach your uh, God-given potential in Christ Jesus and that you would be able to point as many toward Christ as you possibly could. So in this, in this scripture that we looked at tonight, we see that he provided them power to carry out their assignment. So let's look at verse 8 in our text tonight. Verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Jesus called his believers to, to live in such a way that the rest of the world would have reason to believe in him. And you know, uh, the, the believers in, in that first century church were called to live in peace and purity and that hasn't changed that's what he called them to do he calls us to do that very same thing he calls us to live in peace and purity uh, for them to to do that and for us to do that we would need the power that would that that they were given in acts chapter 2 he told them that there was a power coming and what that power is is what y'all know what it is we just read it. it's the holy spirit it's the holy spirit that that was that that, that, is, that was left. It is here now. It's not some leftover thing of Jesus. It is his own thing. He is. Uh, it's not a thing. I shouldn't have made that statement that way. But it, it is not a thing or a place or a something. It is a he, uh, and and he is the Holy Spirit working in and through God's people. He is moving about and 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 pushing and pulling and convicting God's people. And uh, look, that's the power that's there for, and that's the power that he was talking about in chapter 2 of Acts, was this Holy Spirit that, uh, that, w that he was going to leave the helper. And our calling or our assignment is the same today. It hasn't changed one bit. Let's read that again. So if you wonder, well, what, it is, what is it that Christ has called me to do? He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witness. That is, that is what he has called us to be, his witness. And look, you can fill in the blanks. This says Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. All this is saying, it means that everywhere you go, the closest spot to the farthest spot, no matter where it is, how, much, uh, uh, how, how big the crowd is, how small the crowd is, uh, regardless of the obstacles that get in the way, look, your job, my job, our job from the disciples right on down to our time to Jesus calls up his church is to be his witness uh, in, in all of the world, everywhere that we go. Our calling, our assignment has not changed one single bit. We are the only Jesus that some people will ever see. You know, that's an awesome, that's an awesome uh, thought and idea when we think about it. Say that with me one time. We are the only Jesus many people will ever see. And then I want you to think about that for just a few minutes. I want you to think about the opportunity, the privilege that we have to be the only Jesus that some people will ever see. Oh my, if I could just be, if I could just have, if I could just 
be uh, look a, a, a little bit like like Jesus. Oh, what a blessing that would be! So we have this wonderful opportunity and a great responsibility as well to uh, to to strive to be like Him. All right, so uh, uh, that we might be able to witness uh, to all the world the presence of the Holy Spirit living in the lives of believers is how. The, the, this struggling world can see the truth about Jesus today. You understand? Uh, look, the, the the world acts like it doesn't want to. Uh, uh, it doesn't want to know about Jesus. The world acts like it, it would pay no attention to him. I'm telling you what. Look, the world is crying out for Jesus Christ. The world is crying out that it needs. A savior, you know, we we're we're so blessed that we've already that we've already been that we've already uh, had that conviction in our life and on our heart, and we we found Jesus and we know Him as Lord and Savior. And no matter what the world is saying, they're saying screaming out at the top of their voice that they don't need Jesus, but they do need Jesus. And look, we have the 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 opportunity, we have um, the privilege of being able to live and walk and work and be in this struggling world who is crying out for a Savior. And we have the opportunity to show and to point them toward Jesus Christ today. And I tell you what, we need Jesus. We need Jesus, and the world needs Jesus. We all need Jesus. There's coming a day, Scripture says, that when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't want you to end up on the wrong side of bowing your knee too late to know who Jesus Christ is. I want you to get that right today. I want us to make sure that we understand the importance of, of, of getting that message out, of being that witness that He's called us to be so that on that day when that knee bows, we can, we can bow and we know why we're bowing. We know why our tongue is confessing Jesus Christ as Lord because He already is our Lord and we'll be found on the, on the right side of that thing. Look, in this scripture that we read this evening, um, here's another provision. He, he provides a confidence to believe in a wonderful future. Let me read that again. He provides a confidence to believe in a wonderful future. So this confidence in heaven would encourage the disciples to live fearlessly. That's why they were able to do the things that they, they did. Did they get scared? Absolutely, they got scared. Uh, w w look, we, we know that we know that um, there were some there were some times that they they kind of hid out and and and, and, and that they uh, um, were afraid. But we also know that uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that they were given confidence, and and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they were given confidence, which would be encouragement to them. To, to live a life that was, was a, a fearless life. And look, um, the assurance of heaven, that's what, that's what was given them, that confidence of a, of a future life, the assurance of heaven. You know, uh, I, can, I, I, I can read Scripture. We look in Revelation, and we can read a, some, beautiful, there's some beautiful descriptions of, of heaven in God's Word. And we can stop, and we can think, and we can try to, uh, imagine that in our minds and it's just no way that we can even begin to even come close to imagine just how good and wonderful heaven's going to be. The assurance of heaven should give us the confidence to live fearless lives today. You know, that's not something that just was for those disciples, those apostles, and those, those new believers in that day, but it's for us uh, today. It's real and alive and, and that confidence is, is in the resurrection of Christ. That confidence, confidence is in Christ. It's in the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember that the provisions of Christ are often, or, or, or I'm sorry, the, the, remember that the provisions of Christ are offered. That's the word I was looking for. Not often, but they should be all the time. They are often. But the word I was looking for here was offered to all believers. Uh, look, it's not, look, there's no... Uh, there's no qualifications here that you've got to meet certain criteria for it to be offered to you. It's offered to every man, woman, boy and girl. And all we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and, and, and confess our sins and call upon Him as Lord. 
And look, that's not, that's not just in the day of disciples. That's in yesterday. It's today. It's right now. And it's in tomorrow that we, that we, would, we, have, uh, that we have those provisions of Christ that are given to us to help us through living every day. While it seems that all around us things are changing, right? And they are. Uh, but, you know, if you stop and think about it, we think about how things are changing today, but, you know, if we really would look back a little bit, we'd find out, I think we'd finally come to the conclusion pretty quick that, you know, things have been changing all along, haven't they? Uh, nothing really stays the same here on this earth. Things are always changing. We have birthdays and we get older and uh, we have loved ones that, that, that pass, pass on and, and step out into eternity and new life comes into the world and, and look, some things that used to be aren't anymore and, and it changes. Um, but we need to remember, we need to remember a few things while some things are changing. We need to remember that Christ never changed. Jesus, proof of the resurrection, that never changes. It's never going to change. It's been the same since it happened. It was the same. Look, that, that resurrection power, it's always, it's always been who Christ was. Power of daily living and the promise of a future with Him should encourage the church today to live victoriously in a lost and an undone world. So those are some things. Look, you, if you're tired of change, okay, well, I don't really know what to tell you about that because things are going to continue to change. But here are some things right here that will not change. They are what they are, and they'll never be any less in value. They'll never lessen. They'll never decay. They'll never go away. And that's the resurrection, the power in daily living of the Holy Spirit working our lives, and the future of, of, of in eternity of a heaven with Jesus Christ. And look, those things, that should get you through. I don't know what kind of day you just had today. Maybe you just had a really rotten day. i tell you what, if you just had a really rotten day, you think about those things right there that we just talked about, uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, the, 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 uh, the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life and, and the future that we have with him in heaven. I'm going to tell you what, that'll get you excited and fired up. That'll encourage anybody. And look, again, the church today needs that encouragement. I want to close with this last statement or this uh, last scripture. And the Apostle Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4. So let's flip over and we'll close out with this. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Chapter 4. Let's look at verses 7 and 8 in this. And, 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 uh, let me find my place here. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. It says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. You know, that's some very encouraging words, and it's a very encouraging truth, and it's a very encouraging promise um, that, that Paul shared with us here, that, uh, yes, in this life time, there will be struggles, and there will be fights, but we need to stay the course, finish the course, because we know that the future that we have, because of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, that future, that eternity that we have in heaven, is going to it's going to uh, cause us not to have. We won't ever think about all the struggles that we had on this earth when we pass into eternity with Christ Jesus. If you're a, if you're a born again uh, believer, if you've been saved by the blood. Of Jesus Christ uh, our eternity then will be in heaven with him so tonight if you're if you're watching and uh, you're saying what's he what's he talking about what's what's he talking about the, the shed blood of of Jesus Christ I want to just share that with you real quick before we finish up tonight the shed blood of Jesus the uh, the only way the only way uh, God's plan God had a plan it's one plan 
There's not a lot of plans. There's not a bunch of plans. God had one plan, and that plan was that you could be made right with him through his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That's how, that, that was the payment for our sin. You see, we were born into, we were born into sin. The wages of sin is death, and, and, and Jesus Christ was the only thing that could pay for that sin. And his blood shed on the cross. Jesus Christ came into this world. He was born of a virgin. He lived, he grew up, he ministered, and uh, he went to a cross for you and for me. And he died on that cross for us. He shed his blood. They, they pounded nails in his, in his hands and his feet. And they, and they stuck a spear in his side. And he died on the cross. But that's not where the story of Christ ends. They took him down off that cross. And they buried him in a tomb. And they thought, they thought, the world thought, that would be, that would be it. That was the end. This is no Savior. But on the third day, he rose again from death into life. He did that for you. That's why he rose up out of that grave. He did that for you to complete God's plan of salvation. He did that for you. He did that for me. And now, Christ Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father. and He intercedes for us every day. And in him going, he left the Holy Spirit here. To, to help us, to help us along uh, our way each and every day. He left the Holy Spirit to convict, to push and to pull, to lead and to guide, to help us walk uh, this, this, this road each and every day. So if you don't know, if you don't know this Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then look, it's a simple thing, really. Uh, the world will tell you it's really complicated. You've got to do all this kind of stuff. And maybe if you're good enough, and maybe if you do this, but that's a lie. That's not the truth. The truth is, all you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. You have to call upon the name of Jesus and ask Him to forgive you for the sin in your life. You have to ask Him to come and take residence in your heart to save you from your sin, to, to be your Lord and Savior. It's just that simple. You just have to do that. And you have to you pray and ask Him to come and and do that in your life, and, and that's when it's done. And then you allow Him to do the changing in your life, and He'll do that. And then after you've done that, you go out and you seek out and find you a good Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And find you a good church family. See, that's part of God's plan uh, for us when, in, in salvation is that, is that we would gather together in God's house and that believers would look out for each other. That's how we live out this Word, God's Word in our lives, is, is in the corporate body of Christ, the church. So I would encourage you if, you, if you need that in your life today, that you would call upon the name of Jesus, and you would know that salvation, and then you would join in, join, plant your roots with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, and you go to work for the Lord. I tell you, it's my privilege to be a servant for the Lord. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity every day that I get to serve Him and be His witness in all the world. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank You again for our time together this evening. Lord God, I thank You for Your Word tonight in Acts. Lord, I thank You for, uh, Lord, for uh, encouraging us through Your Word Lord, we know that these apostles in their day, there were some, there were some hard things uh, coming. Lord, you saw every one of them, just like in our lives. Lord God, you see everything that's coming our way. And Lord, sometimes even in your, you, you try to steer us and, uh, and, and turn us uh, so that we won't have uh, some hurt and things. But Lord, we, we get kind of hard-headed. And Lord, we just bow all up and we say, well, I'm doing it my way. And you say, well... I'm going to love you anyways, and I'm going to love you through the hurt that you're going to have because you saw it coming. And I'm so thankful tonight that I serve a, a God who loves us in spite of our own selves. And uh, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to lead us and guide us. Father, I pray for that one tonight who may have been listening uh, to, uh, to your word. That, uh, and uh, Lord, they're, they're asking... Uh, in their heart right now, they're asking you, Lord God, to come and just speak to their soul. 
And Lord, to draw them unto you. Lord, that you would, uh, you would uh, pour out your salvation on them. Lord God, I pray for that one lost and undone in their sin. That they would find you right now in this very moment. And Lord, they would find this, this great work of salvation. Uh, that uh, you came into this world to give us. And Father God, I pray that you'd allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. And Lord, that um, the Holy Spirit would just surround them in such a way, Lord God, that they, they wouldn't even be able to take a breath because they would know that there's something supernatural working. And Lord God, they would call upon you and they would know salvation and they would never, ever be the same. And Lord God, that you would use them in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.